last week or so, almost every game I've reviewed was sent to us by Chris from Jersey City, New Jersey. That's because he sent us a giant freaking box of games. I mean, look at this! This is a giant freaking box of games. And the best part about this giant freaking box of games is that they're all for me. Look at that. And guess what? The whole thing's just, it's all professional wrestling and cartoons. Which, you, you could say the same thing about my brain. But as I dig through this box, layer by layer, I'm also uncovering some unexpected surprises. Like this game. This is obviously one of those unexpected surprises. And it's surprising in more ways than one. It's Cool Spot for the Super NES. Wait, Cool Spot? Wait, like, like the beverage? So I'll be real honest here, I'm digging through wrestling games. I see a licensed game based on a soft drink. And I'm thinking this must be a mistake, because Chris wouldn't do this. Then I remembered how you guys like to send me bad games on purpose. And I assume you've influenced even Chris to do so. Way to go, guys! You jerks! Anyway, then I remembered this really old 7-Up game. The one that's basically just Othello. So I assume that's what this one had to be. That's not what this one is. Surprise number one. Turns out there were actually many 7-Up games. And the Othello one I was remembering? That was only the first 7-Up game. This was the second of four 7-Up games. Hey, what do Bioshock, uh, Pikmin, Conquer, Sin and Punishment, Mother, and Kid Icarus all have in common? None of those series have as many games as 7-Up. How's that make you feel? But anyway, this is clearly not Othello. Now this one's an actual, full-fledged platformer. You play a spot. You have to collect spots as you try to find and rescue another spot. So obviously this, this game's about as deep as a glass of 7-Up. But don't sit there and act like a cold glass of 7-Up isn't refreshing and delicious. It's crisp, it's tasty, especially cherry 7-Up. You kidding me? See, and see, this is proof that advertising works. I play this game for no more than a few hours until, oh, now all I want is a nice, crisp, icy glass of 7-Up. But you do know it's the Uncola. You know that. Although, I mean, to call it a full-fledged platformer, that might be a bit of a stretch. I mean, look, it's much better than it's got any right to be, but it's still pretty shallow in its design. You know, the gameplay never really evolves or anything, never teaches you any new tricks. It's basically the same from start to finish. You just platform, find the cage, throw bubbles at, at things. Really weird things, like crabs, and mice, in pajamas. Which to me is, I mean, that's definitely one of the game's drawbacks, the randomness of it all. Because it's never like, oh, this is so funny, and how random, this is so cool. No, it's just bizarre. You go from a beach, to some crappy wooden ship, to what seems like, like some old lady's attic or something. I was half expecting to see mothballs all over the place. I mean, technically the game looks fine. But there's never any cohesive art direction. You know, it's just it's just random things in random places. And actually, I think the game looks the coolest in these bonus levels. Because you're basically inside this huge bottle of 7-Up. You have to bounce on the bubbles to collect all the spots. I mean, at least then this this situation makes sense. And look, I'm look, I'm not saying this whole game should be 7-Up bottles, but it would have been cool to see the game use its brand for some cohesive theme. I mean, this was basically a commercial, and this was the 90s, so just go for it, you know? Give me wacky, surreal levels based on 7-Up's different products and ad campaigns. That'd be a lot cooler than my grandma's attic. I mean, who drinks 7-Up in the attic? The attic is where memories go to die. But again, even if the presentation could have been more creative, it's at least solid from a technical perspective. And speaking of surprises, the music's actually a highlight too. It's actually probably the game's claim to fame. So again, I mean, this game's probably better than you're expecting, but even so, I, I just didn't, I don't know, I don't think it's anything special. Or anything more than just surprisingly okay. The controls are okay, but they could have definitely used some tightening up, especially your jumps. And the level design too. You know, there's no, like, amazing or memorable sections, you know? It's all just, eh, this is okay. And I'm surprised. And actually, it's a lot cheaper than it needs to be, too. There are enemies with just deliberately crappy placement, and since your camera's so tight, visibility's an issue sometimes, too. So obviously, there's a lot to criticize with a game like this. I mean, you play a platformer like Super Mario World, or Donkey Kong Country, 
and then go play Cool Spot. I'm telling you, you'll, you'll be burping up criticisms like you just drank a case of 7-Up. Which I'm assuming would kill you, by the way. The good news is the game will not. In fact, quite the contrary, Cool Spot is surprisingly okay. Not quite Cherry 7-Up, not quite Pepsi Blue either. And that's a nice surprise. The game, not Pepsi Blue, that sucked. It's Cool Spot for the Super NES!